Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and welcome to our very first lightning round video. Now you guys asked me over 75 questions of which I have narrowed down to 25 that I'll be answering in this video. Now five of these questions are actually going to be parlayed over to Mike at ukerepublic.com. So he's gonna be answering questions that are specifically related to the build quality of ukulele. All right guys, so before we jump into the 25 questions, make sure you stay tuned because we're going to be announcing who won the 10,000 subscriber giveaway ukulele. Question one, Clarice asked how to do the triplet strum on the ukulele. All right, so Jake actually has a great lesson on how to do the mechanics behind this technique. So I'm going to put a link in the description box below. So go ahead and hit pause on this video, watch that video real quick to learn how to do this technique, and then come back because question two is also going to be on triplet strum. Question two, Andrew Crass asks, I would like to have a tip for triplet strum. Okay, so now that you've watched Jake's lesson and you know how to do the technique, I wanna add a couple things onto his lesson. So what I'm gonna be explaining is what triplets are and how to understand them from a rhythmic point of view. So to do this, let's go ahead and look at one measure in 4-4. Four, four. So 4-4 four, four means that we're playing four beats per measure, quarter note gets the beat. In essence, that sounds like this. One, two, three, four, next measure. One, two, three three, four. Now, if we subdivide that beat from a quarter note into two, so from one to two, we would be playing eighth notes. So in essence, we would have one and two and three and four and. Now, if we subdivide that beat again, we're gonna get what we're looking for, which is triplets, eighth note triplets. So for going from two to three now, so we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So as you see, you have three hits per beat. So to demonstrate all the way through, we're gonna go quarter, eighth note, triplet. We have one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's imperative that you understand what an eighth note triplet is. It's three hits per beat. So when you're practicing this technique, what you wanna do is you wanna get a metronome app. This is the one that I use. And you wanna go ahead and set it to a, a slow tempo. I would recommend 60. Start at that, if it's too fast, go a bit slower. If it's too slow, go a little bit faster. But what you wanna do is you wanna click the little subdivide button. And you're gonna subdivide the beat into triplets. What that means is that your metronome is gonna play one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's gonna have a hit for all Three. So this way, when you're playing along, you'll have a guide. So instead of hearing just a quarter note where you have to do the timing all by yourself, the metronome will go. So when you're practicing, just take a C chord and basically you have one, two, three, 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 right? So another great way, if you're brand new to understanding this timing, then you can start with quarter notes, just strum one, two, three, four eighth notes, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So the trick and the key to the triplet strum is understanding the rhythm. Question three, Allfart asks, would you recommend restringing a baritone uke to re-entrant GCEA? No, I would purchase a reentrant tuned ukulele, a soprano, a concert, a tenor, in addition to your baritone ukulele. Question four, Amber Uke 92 asks, I was just wondering if it was worth it to buy an electric ukulele. I don't have one, and I think it will maybe kill the ukulele vibe, if you know what I mean. So this comes down to personal opinion. Now, I do agree that it kills the acoustic, the traditional ukulele vibe. And I actually had a chance to play an electric ukulele uh, about a month ago when I was at Uke Republic. And to me, it feels and it sounds like a miniature guitar. So personally, if I was to be plugging in to play electric, then I would rather just play guitar. Question five, Fed and Dark asks, Hi Andrew, how often do I have to change strings on ukulele? So this really depends on how much you play. If you play every day, you're gonna have to change them sooner than if you 
don't. I generally recommend to change them every six months, so at least every six months. Now my favorite types of strings that I use on my Kanalea are Aquila, so I'll go ahead and put a link below so you can check them out on Amazon. Question six, Daigasa Ayuk asks, Hi, how should you pluck strings properly? I seem to pull mine up and they slap down and sound dull rather than a pleasing ringing tone. All right, so I think this is what's happening. You may be plucking a bit too hard. So try to pluck a little bit lighter. So if I just take my first string right here, I'm just gonna take my ring finger. Well, remember when we pluck, we want to have an upward pluck to this string. So we never want to go down or we never want to go straight because well, that won't work. But you want to have this kind of nice little curve. So just take your uh, first string, use your ring finger, and just try a light pluck. Now try that again with the second string with your middle finger. So same concept, I'm just coming up a little bit. And then the same with the third string and the same with the fourth string, but this time with your thumb, you're just going to go down. But the key is to have a nice light touch and try to make every string ring out at the same volume. And you can see that I'm not tugging the string, the string's not coming up, I'm not doing it too hard. So it's all about a light touch to produce a pleasant tone. Question seven, a lot of pants asks, Sometimes I make small melodies on the uke by coming up with a cool chord progression and recording it. Then I try to come up with a melody to that chord progression and putting them together with my computer. But I find it hard to make the melody fit to the chord progression. I've heard something about root notes and stuff, but I don't really know what that is. Thanks, love your lessons. So most music is built from three basic elements. Those three elements are rhythm, harmony, and melody. Now I'm going to read off the music school definition of this and then I'm going to give you a layman example of what it means. So rhythm, this is the lowest common denominator of all music. It is timing and the various subdivisions of a steady pulse. This is the most basic and important element of all. Melody, a progression of single pitches organized by rhythm. Harmony, two or more notes played simultaneously such as intervals and chords. Okay. What does that mean in layman's terms? Let's break it down. So think of rhythm like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That was quarter notes, right? Now think of the melody. Oh, to joy, right? Now think of harmony. It's the chord that fits over the melody. There you go, three parts of music. So understanding how these three parts work together is vital to answering your question. Now, I actually wrote an entire course on how to write a song on the ukulele. So you can click this link right here and you can check out the course. What it does is it takes a song that I wrote and analyzes those three elements of music, the rhythm, the melody, and the harmony and it goes completely in-depth detail on how the three parts come together to create a great sounding piece of music. Question eight, the Andersons asks, once I tune my ukulele, how long can I expect it to stay in tune? So if your strings are properly stretched out, they're not a brand new set that you just put on, you can usually expect it to last a few sessions. But I would highly recommend that you tune your ukulele every single time you pick it up to play or practice. My favorite tuners are these snark tuners. They clip onto the headstock right here. They work by vibration, so you can tune if there's noise in the background. They're just extremely accurate and they're very cheap. They're like eight or nine bucks. I'll put a link in the description box below so you can check it out on Amazon. Oh, by the way, the Andersons, congrats, because you won our 10,000 YouTube subscriber giveaway ukulele. So I'm gonna be sending you the Kala Soprano ukulele. Question nine, should a person master re-entrant tuning before they branch into low G? No, the differences are gonna be too great. So the way you approach playing on a re-entrant tuned ukulele versus a low G is gonna be different. So let me give you an example. You could take advantage of playing a high-pitched melody note on the fourth string of a re-entrant tuned ukulele. So going back to the song that we just played, that melody was Ode to Joy, you see that that last melody note I played as the open G. So the open G on the fourth string. You couldn't do that on a low G ukulele. It would sound wrong. It would sound off. 
So the way you approach playing is going to be different between the two instruments. So if you're interested in both instruments, get one of each. Question 10. Carmelo Ukes asks, I'd like to write my own tablature. What software are you using for creating your tabs? Is it available on both PC and Mac? So I use Guitar Pro 6, and yes, it's available for both platforms. Now, Guitar Pro 7 just came out. It only took them like seven years or something to release Guitar Pro 7. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Guitar Pro. But in all seriousness, it's a great program and it's pretty affordable, but it's a great program for notating. Question 11. Felix Pai asks, Hi, Andrew, can you suggest a book for basic music theory? Well, actually, I can do one better. We just released a brand new course that's called An Introduction to Music Theory and Jamming. So you can click this link to check out the course. So this course will provide you with a fundamental understanding of the basics of music theory, but it's going to go a step further. It's going to teach you how to actually apply that theory to your own playing. Question 12, MCA310 asks, I'm looking for a clean sounding guitar headphone amp for my electric ukulele so that I can practice privately with headphones and spare my husband from my massacre of the Game of Thrones theme. Can you recommend a guitar headphone amp? So I have a bit of a sidestep suggestion for you. Instead of looking for a guitar amp, have you thought about buying an audio interface? So an audio interface allows you to record your ukulele playing. So you'll be able to plug in, just like I am, and you can put the headphones on, you can practice in silent, you can hear yourself playing through the headphones, and above all, you're gonna be able to record yourself. So that means that you can go back and listen to your playing, which is a great way to assess how you're doing. So what I recommend is the Pod Studio GX. It's a hundred bucks, it's tiny, and it won't take up much space on your desk. So I'll put a link in the description box below so you can check it out on Amazon. Question 13, Danny the Third asks, all right, I know your tutorials are solo playing, but I was wondering if you had any tips on singing and playing at the same time. Yes, I do. So to sing and play, it requires you to put your playing on autopilot mode. Now the problem with that is that a beginner and intermediate player are usually 100% focused on their playing. So how can we learn to put our playing on autopilot? One suggestion is to take a simple strum pattern. So make a C chord and let's just do down, down, up, up, down. So that rhythm is one, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four. So if I put that together, one, two, three, four. One, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four. So again, it's down, down, up, up, down. Okay? So take that simple strum pattern, and what you're going to do is you're going to talk over it. So for example, my day was great. I just got a haircut. I hope I don't have hairs on my face while I'm recording this video. But you can hear that I'm still staying in perfect timing. Right? So this is a great way just to practice putting the playing into autopilot mode. So just go ahead and have a conversation with somebody while you practice. But you can also hit record on your phone and make sure that you actually are staying in time. Question 14. Compass Rose asks, My question is about learning pieces of music. What is your process for learning a piece? I've been playing for a little over a year and it still seems like it takes forever for me to memorize songs. All right, so this is a really good question and it really boils down to how are you practicing? Now on our very first day at music college, our very first lesson was on proper practice. Proper practice has three elements to it, repetition, reinforcement, and evaluation. Now you can click this link right here and you can read the entire article that talks in detail about those three steps and there's actually a video lesson where I highlight examples and real life situations for applying that. Question 15, Victor Rushren asks, what do you like the most slash is the best for you? Finger picking with one, two, three, or four fingers at the same time. All right, so this question really depends on the context of the piece that you are playing. Now, I actually wrote an entire course, which is called Finger Picking Concepts, an intro to finger style playing. This course teaches you how to recognize when to employ a thumb approach, a three finger approach, or a four finger approach. So you can click this link right here to check out the complete course. 
Question 16, Cornish Dipped asks, Hi everybody, I've been watching videos for the last few months from Rock Class 101 and decided to finally join. I'm a new uke player, going on five months now, my New Year's resolution, but actually a drummer for the last 25 years, so my theory is remedial. I know, bring on the jokes. Sure. What do you call a girl on a drummer's arm? A tattoo. My question is, do you have any quick tips or tricks that you would like to give to students to help them learn the fretboard? Great question. So this is actually the very first lesson in our brand new course, An Introduction to Music Theory and Jamming. Now the first lesson is called Tackling the Fretboard, and it's all about learning to memorize the notes on the fretboard and understanding how the 12 notes in Western music function. So this lesson is actually free with basic membership. So if you're not a member of rockclass101.com, take a second to sign up and you can check out this lesson completely for free. So go ahead and click here to check out the course. Question 17, Awi Alyssa asks, Hi Andrew, do you have any advice to get better with rhythm? Yes I do, but it's going to be a bigger explanation than I can give in this lightning round, so you get your own video. Question 18, Mozart Rosie asks, I have a concert size ukulele that has a tenor neck. I am not used to playing on a tenor, so I find that stretching is slowing me down. What exercises would you suggest to increase the stretch in my left hand? So this is a great question. I actually wrote an entire article that includes three exercises that you can incorporate into your daily practice for increasing your left hand reach on the ukulele. So I'll go ahead and put a link in the description box below so you can check out that complete written article with the exercises. Question 19, J. Karan 76 asks, how similar are a ukulele and a bass guitar, seeing as how they both have four strings? So yes, they do have four strings each, but the difference lies in the interval distance between the strings. So for example, on the ukulele, we have first string to second, A to E. That's a distance of a fifth. Then we have E to C. That's a distance of a minor sixth. And then we have C to G. That's a distance of a fifth. Now, if this was a bass, we would have this. The first string would be a G, and the second would be a D. So G to D is the distance of a fifth. Then we would have D to A, which is, again, the distance of a fifth. Then we would have A to E, which, again, is a distance of a fifth. So on a bass, you have an equal distance of a fifth between each string. Now, on the uke, you had one different. One of the strings was a distance of a minor six. So what does this mean? Well, the chord shapes that you learn on ukulele will not translate over to the bass like they would if you were going to a guitar. So you could take on a guitar, you could take a G chord shape, and on a guitar, it would be a D. But if you tried to do the same shape on a bass, it wouldn't translate over. Question 20. Celestine Hound asks, Hi, if you were about to turn into an ukulele, which one would you like to be? I definitely like to be a concert. This feels pretty good. Hey, Mike here from Uke Republic and I answer a few questions from the great people over at Rock Class 101. We'll start out first with question number one. Cindy Lee writes, So I've noticed that when I play higher up on the fretboard, the notes sound a bit flat. I make sure to tune my uke before playing too. So is this an issue because of the uke itself or because of me? All right. So what's going on here, if I'm understanding your question correctly, is that the, um, the string, when you're playing it here, you got lots of, lots of uh, volume, lots of projection. But as you move up the fingerboard, you have less. That is actually normal. So, as you're going up, you have a shorter string, and this is causing less, uh, or, or more tension and less vibration. So it, it fades away quicker the closer uh, you are to the sound hole. So that's normal. Hey Cindy, so I'm gonna add on to Mike's answer really quick, uh, because I interpreted the question a little bit differently than he did. So if you're playing notes that are higher up on the neck and they're sounding flat to you, that could be a sign of an intonation issue. So a quick way to see if your ukulele has an intonation issue is to play the open first string, and then go ahead and play a harmonic 
on the 12th fret. Now that should be the same pitch, and you can check it with your tuner, so it should light up exactly the same as the open and the harmonic. So intonation in a nutshell means that as we play up the notes throughout the neck, they should be perfectly in tune. Like this should be right in the middle of your tuner saying an A. This should be right in the middle of your tuner saying a B, a C, and so forth fourth going up the neck. So that's um, something that I would look into. If it's a problem with the intonation, you can actually just get a setup done and they'll fix that for you. So hope that answers the question either if it was in regards to how Mike uh, went with it or how I did. Question number two from Caruso. Does the quality of the strings affect the sound of the uke? For instance, if I bought a cheap or mid-price ukulele, would it sound better with more expensive strings? And if I bought a pricey uke and restrung it with cheaper strings, would the quality dampen? All right, good question, good question. So I would look at it this way. Ukulele strings, for the most part, are not expensive. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on good ukulele strings, but you do want to buy quality strings. So Aquila is a great name. Fremont, Worth, Living Water, Labella, they're all great strings. What it comes down to is the way the strings are made and what you personally like. Um, some strings have more tension, so maybe they have a little less sustain. Some more medium tension, I think most players like, so you might want to consider that. Uh, different materials, so Aquila has their own uh, material that's sort of a nylon base called Nile Gut, and then they have other materials as well, but the Nile gut is what a lot of people uh, are using. And then, um, of course, you've got fluorocarbon strings from Fremont, Living Water, Worth, uh, Diodario, and they're great strings as well, just a uh, less material, so you get a, th a thinner, skinnier string, but it still produces ample volume and has a really nice uh, finish to the notes. So all these strings are great. Just look for a good quality string, try some out. Uh, I'd also like to recommend uh, that you leave them on for a little while. It takes one or two weeks for a string to fully distend, and then you'll get an accurate idea of what the string's potential is with your instrument. Moving right along, we got a question from Victor Verschuren. Verschuren, Verschuren. I hope I pronounced that right. What are the best ways to maintain and keep your ukulele clean? How should I clean it? Can I let it stay in the sun, etc.? All right, so yes, we get questions about that a lot. Now, I'll start you off with one simple way of maintaining your uke, which is, you know, after you play it or if it gets a little dusty, you can take a damp cloth, make sure it's a clean, damp cloth so you don't scratch up your instrument, um, and just wipe it down. That's probably, you know, one of the best ways to do it. But occasionally, you may need a little something else, or maybe you want to add a little polish to the instrument. Okay, so we sell a few different products. One uh, maker that we like a lot, we use this in our shop, is Music Nomad. So we've got Guitar Detailer, which of course works for ukulele. And this is going to be good for your um, satin finish and also your gloss finish. So that's a great product. Another one is uh, also by Music Nomad called uh, ooh, yeah, Guitar One. This is going to be for gloss finish. Um, it's going to add a little bit more wax and it will carnauba wax to get the sheen back up. Also cleans the instrument as well. One thing I would like to add too, something that people forget about, is their fingerboard. Uh, your fingerboard for the most part are untreated pieces of wood. So occasionally you need to rehydrate that wood. Um, we sell some products that hydrate the instrument up. Well, Prinzi fingerboard conditioner, it's a paste, it's really nice. Uh, we also carry uh, again, Music Nomad, they've got some great products, too, for hydrating your fingerboard. And, um, you know, I always recommend do it when you change your strings, but if you're not changing your strings like you should, uh, go ahead and put that on, you know, two, three times a year just to hydrate that wood, especially if you uh, are using forced air heat or a lot of air conditioning. It pulls the moisture out of the air. So do consider that, your, your fingerboard. Now, as far as having it out in the sun, Got to use common sense on this. Uh, of course, if you walk outside and you're playing, I've played outdoors before plenty of times, uh, you know, just the sunlight isn't going to damage your instrument. But if you left it out there, uh, you know, you might, you might do something to the finish. Um, 
Also, if it got too hot, you could possibly warp uh, the wood. So no extreme conditions for ukulele, no extreme stuff. So just common sense on that one and just enjoy your ukulele. Just play it and have fun. Okay, we've got question number 24 from 122Dane122. And he writes, Do slotted head ukuleles hold their tune better because they are a lot more expensive than non-slotted head ukuleles? I was wondering if it was worth it or what the benefit is. So the idea for the slot head first came from the classical guitar. Now classical guitars are built lighter than uh, regular acoustic guitars. So to balance that out, they took some mass away from the headstock and it just works great with the classical guitar. So that's been brought over to the ukulele. Um, now, what are some of the benefits? This is debatable. Some people feel that the slot head uh, is going to give more sustain uh, and also perhaps more, a little more projection or volume to the instrument. Again, these are debatable um, thoughts, but one thing is for sure, they look cool. <laughs> I love slot head instruments. I love standard head instruments as well, but you know, slot heads really do look cool with certain instruments, with certain ukuleles, and I like them a lot. Now, as far as them being expensive, um, they can tag on a bit more money on some of the uh, smaller boutique builders like, say, La Prinzi or Canilea, um, because there's a lot more hands on work they're having to do. Question number five from Winnie T writes, do different materials such as wood or plastic make a ukulele sound different? The answer is yes. <laughs> so yes, you've got all sorts of materials ukuleles are being built out of today. There's plastics uh, and different kinds of plastics, injection molded, um, ABS, just all kinds of plastics. Uh, we also carry Blackbird ukuleles which uses carbon fiber and their own material called ECOA. Really cool stuff if you get a chance to check it out. But So again, another material. And then you have a host of woods. You've got mahogany, you've got Hawaiian koa, you've got acacia from all parts of the world, cherry, uh, mango wood, spruce cedar, and the list goes on. It's, it's, you know, infinite, or as infinite as the amount of materials we can think of to make ukulele. So why do they do it? Of course, you know, the looks are great, but it's tonal characteristics. So woods like spruce and cedar, we call those dynamic woods. They're very light in weight and they really flex and add that projection and really nice note structure with those uh, types of tone woods. And then you've got other woods that a lot of people think of as traditional mahoganies and koa. And you know, they're, they're beautiful too. Some of them are just so warm and, and rich and ah, you just, love them too. So each wood does play a role. Now the plastics, they don't have quite, they're, they're pretty stiff, so they, they don't have quite the um, uh, volume a lot of times as say a wood instrument would be. So yes, all those materials play a role. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this lightning round. It was a lot of fun and it was hard to narrow down 75 questions to 25. There were so many great questions. So if your question wasn't answered in this very first lightning round, please don't forget about it. Submit it for our next lightning round. I definitely want to do this again. This was a lot of fun for me. And by the way, if you made it to the very end of this video, then you're a super fan. So I want you to go ahead and type the word bananas in the comment box below. All right, guys, take care, and I'll see you in the next lesson.